Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Linda Lamp here. We've been reading A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 24, The Goal of Specialness, and section four, The Forgiveness of Specialness. The forgiveness of specialness. Forgiveness is the end of specialness. Only illusions can be forgiven and then they disappear. Forgiveness is release from all illusions, and that is why it is impossible, but partly, to forgive. No one who clings to one illusion can see himself as sinless, for he holds one error to himself as lovely still. And so he calls it unforgivable and makes it sin. How can he then give his forgiveness wholly when he would not receive it for himself? for it is sure he would receive it wholly the instant that he gave it so, and thus his secret guilt would disappear, forgiven by himself. Whatever form of specialness you cherish, you have made sin. Inviolate it stands, strongly defended with all your puny might against the will of God. And thus it stands against yourself, your enemy, not God's, so does it seem to split you off from God and make you separate from him as its defender. You would protect what God created not. And yet this idol that seems to give you power has taken it away. For you have given your brother's birthright to it, leaving him alone and unforgiven and yourself in sin beside him, both in misery, both the, before the idol that can save you not. It is not you who are so vulnerable and open to attack that just a word, a little whisper that you do not like, a circumstance that suits you not, or an event that you do not, did not anticipate upsets your world and hurls it into chaos. Truth is not frail. Illusions leave it perfectly unmoved and undisturbed. But specialness is not the truth in you. It can be thrown off balance by anything. What rests on nothing can never be stable. However large and overblown it seems to be, it still must rock and turn and whirl about with every breeze. Without foundation, nothing is secure. Would God have left his son in such a state where safety has no meaning? No, his son is safe resting on him. It is your specialness that is attacked by everything that walks and breathes or crawls and creeps or even lives at all. Nothing is safe from its attack and it is safe from nothing. It will forevermore be forgiven and that is what it is, a secret vow that what God wants for you will never be and that you will oppose his will forever. Nor is it possible that the two can never be the same, while specialness stands like a flaming sword of death between them and makes them enemies. God asks for your forgiveness. He would have no separation like an alien will rise between what he wills for you and what you will. They are the same, for neither one wills specialness. How could they will the death of love itself? Yet they are powerless to make attack upon illusions. They are not bodies. As one mind, they wait for all illusions to be brought to them and left behind. Salvation challenges not even death. And God himself, who knows that death is not your will, must say thy will is done because you think it is. Forgive the great creator of the universe, the source of life, of love and holiness, the perfect father of a perfect son, for your illusions of your specialness. Here is the hell you choose to be your home. He chose not this for you. Ask not, he enter this. The way is barred to love and to salvation. Yet if you would release your brother from the depths of hell, you have forgiven him whose will it is. You rest forever in the arms of peace, in perfect safety, 
and without the heat and malice of one thought of specialness to mar your rest. Forgive the Holy One that specialness he could not give and that you made instead. The special ones are all asleep, surrounded by a world of loveliness they do not see. Freedom and peace and joy stand there beside the briar on which they sleep and call them to come forth and waken from their dream of death. Yet they hear nothing, they are lost in dreams of specialness. They hate the call that would awaken them and they curse God because he did not make their dream reality. Curse God and die, but not by him who made not death, but only in a, the dream. Open your eyes a little, see the Savior God give you, that you might look on him and give him back his birthright. It is yours. The slaves of specialness will, be set, will yet be free. Such is the will of God and of his son. Would God condemn himself to hell and to damnation? And do you will that this will be done unto your Savior? God calls to you from him to join his will to save you both from hell. Look on the print of nails upon his hands that he holds out for your forgiveness. God asks your mercy on his son and on himself. Deny them not. They ask of you, but that your will be done. They seek your love that you may love yourself. Love not your specialness instead of them. The print of nails is on your hands as well. Forgive your father. It was not his will that you be crucified. Well, uh, this is uh, continues, you know, to be obscure in its uh, simplicity and uh, difficult to understand. So I do apologize for that part of this text. Basically, what this chapter or section of this chapter is saying is that you are not special, that we are all one and we are all as special as each other. And in this 3D world dimension that we've, we're living in and experiencing, it's very often the case that people believe themselves to be better than other people, different than other people, more special than other people. And I believe the point of this section is, is to reiterate that we are all one. We are all divinity in form. And so we need to forgive ourselves for our misunderstandings and our inability to see and know what is truly happening here. So I hope that interpretation helps. If you have questions or you would like additional assistance, you can text me at 907-351-3003. You can also leave me a voicemail there, but um, I don't carry that phone with me. It's in the office most of the time. So sending a message and um, waiting for a reply is probably your best bet. But you can also feel free to leave a voicemail if you like. You can find out about more about my work if you go to lindalamp.shop or lindalamp.com. And until next week, namaste and much love.